What's going on, my PT peeps and Walking Dead family? Welcome to the PT channel. I'm One Eye Bri, back to talk about The Walking Dead Season 9, Episode 5, my review, discussion. We're going to talk about it, obviously. So, spoiler warning if you're worried about spoilers, stop watching now as I don't want to ruin anything for you for Season 9, Episode 5. I thought the episode was pretty good, not great, and especially watching the first part of Talking Dead and finding out what's happening with Rick Grimes, I'm like, a little annoyed by it but if you love the walking dead and the walking dead family hit the subscribe button become a valued member of the pt channel and our walking dead family and if you love all things walking dead this is the channel for you obviously photo credit and info credit to these fine folks right here giving credit where credit is due season 9 episode 5 what comes after rick is forced to face the past as he struggles to maintain the safety of the communities and protect the future he and carl envisioned rick grimes rick grimes last episode but it turns out that Rick's going to be part of the story. Future films, feature films, AMC films, Rick's not going anywhere. He's going to be continuing in the universe of The Walking Dead, just not on the TV show, is what we got from Scott Gimple. But I like the connections from the prior episodes, prior seasons, really mainly the pilot episode and the connection with Herschel, Sasha, and Shane. And they kept saying, what's your wound? And you have to wake up. And if you watch Talking Dead and you watched In Memoriam, Rick is not on there. So Rick is not gone from the Walking Dead universe. He's gone from the show, which is kind of like misleading because it's Rick's last episode on the show, but he's going to be doing different things. And he just said on the interview with Yvette Nicole Brown that this was his last scene. And this is probably where Norman was tickling him. But I like the connections from season one to season nine back and forth and hallucinations probably the giggle right here is where norman reedus is tickling him so they shot it you know out of sequence so it was kind of funny but andrew lincoln is the heart of the show and i think the show can continue on without him but it's going to be forever changed and i have to be honest i wasn't really upset or about to come to tears or anything emotional because i knew rick was going to be away potentially i knew rick would survive he would get on the helicopter with jadis if the spoilers were true and they turned out to be true the horse got away, which I'm surprised about because the horses usually die on The Walking Dead. Rick's whole thing, which was great because if you just watch The Talking Dead, he's saying that he started the journey by himself and he's going to end the journey by himself. And all I know is that there were a lot of walkers in this episode. Probably the most walkers I've seen in a long time since season six, episode one. I like the idea of Rick saving himself and didn't get devoured by walkers. The idea with the rebar being on the same side and him pulling himself up. And he could survive that. You know, he's bleeding out profusely. I don't know what the timeline of how long he actually was actually passing out and being in and out of consciousness. And it was kind of really reflective of the whole journey of Rick Grimes. He came in alone and he's going to go out alone. But Rick getting on the horse and riding and staying alive and the walkers were on him and then they stayed off and they were back and they were farther away. So they definitely play with the walker distance a lot. I liked it when Rick got away on the horse, and I have to say, I did like the idea that the horse survived, because that usually doesn't happen. <laughs> Every season, we kind of lose a horse, and the pilot episode, we lost a horse. The horse got devoured in downtown Atlanta, but Rick was in rough shape. He was in pretty rough shape at the end of the episode, too. We'll see how he makes out of it. Maybe he goes back in a coma. Maybe he doesn't. We'll have to see what actually is in store for Rick Grimes. But I want to see what happens with the Rick Grimes story. It's not going to be on the TV show. So I guess it was his last episode. They didn't false advertise there. And I wonder if people are still going to watch the show or not. I know I am, and a lot of people will. Millions and millions of people will. But will you? Jadis was a big part of the episode, and so was Maggie, and so was Michonne for the future. But Jadis going with Rick is a big storyline. Is Jadis ever coming back to the show too? Is she gone? What was her plan with the gun? Why did she throw it away? Who are the helicopter people? We still don't know. I believe it was Heath's RV, but we didn't really have any connection or confirmation with that too. But Jadis with Rick going somewhere? Are they going to London? We'll have to wait and see. Here's the walker that Maggie killed. 
Maggie and Diane make it to Alexandria, and the whole Maggie-Negan situation was pretty interesting, but you knew that Maggie was not going to kill Negan, especially if you read the comics. And for the storyline, Negan's got to be a big part of the show going forward since we lost Rick, and potentially if we lose Maggie, because again, Lauren Cohen may be gone after next week's episode or a future episode. Rick on the horse, bleeding, Rick on the horse, bleeding, Rick on the horse, bleeding, passing in and out of consciousness was really a lot of the episode, but I like how they connected the dots with Sasha, Herschel, and Shane. I wish there were more hallucinations with Carl. Where was Carl at? We needed that. Where was Glenn? Where were something else? But I liked the connections with the prior cast. And I find it very telling that we didn't get a Carl flashback or hallucination for that. The whole journey was for Rick to find his family. And I like the connecting points that they said, your family's not here, just like prior hallucinations. The Cardile mailbox, they said on Talking Dead that it's a connection with Night of the Living Dead, but to me, it's still a connection with Day of the Dead. So nice Easter eggs there. And like I said before, I really enjoyed them connecting the pilot episode that I watched before watching this episode, which I recommend. Definitely go back and watch a pilot episode. I like them connecting the pilot episode with Rick and Shane back here again, downtown Atlanta on the horse. Kind of takes me back the first episode. I liked the Shane dialogue. I liked Shane connecting with Rick, them going back to the ketchup and the french fries and them talking that, that Shane's an asshole and Shane was talking about his daughter and it was pretty cool. I have to admit, one of the best parts of the episode. The walkers at the house, well the shack, and then Rick bandaging himself up with the sheet. Kind of was a cool thing to see that Rick can possibly get out of it, but the close call, you know, we had to have close calls that Rick was gonna die. And then we get to Michonne and Scott and Judith, and it was really cute with Judith and Michonne in the kitchen, and then Michonne talking with Maggie, and Maggie being let in to talk to Negan. But I liked when Maggie showed up, and Judith goes, Aunt Maggie. Like, Judith has no idea what's going on, and it was just a cute innocence until the very end of the episode. Awesome, badass, new Judith. And the idea that Maggie let Negan live, it almost had to happen, because Negan's gotta be a bigger part of the show since we're losing Rick. And if you know the comics, you know I said it before, but I like that Michonne let Maggie in. Would that be a good thing in real life? Probably not. Maggie didn't need to open the cell, she had a gun. She could have just <laughs> shot Negan there. It just kind of, all right. But I like the idea that they brought a recent comic storyline to the show right now. And remember, this comic storyline for season nine is a little bit all over the place, which is kind of different, and I like it. Rick on the horse, bleeding. Rick on the horse, bleeding again. A million walkers. There was probably the most walkers I've seen in an episode, like I said, since season six, episode one. And that was okay. I think the walkers are going to be a bigger part of the series going forward, obviously, with the Whisperers coming, whenever that is. No hint of them, but Herschel with Rick was pretty awesome. And I really enjoyed when Rick said, I'm sorry for what happened to you, Beth, Glenn, and to what happened to Maggie. And it was a nice moment. And it was very short, I felt. I felt the Herschel part was not as long as the Sasha and the Shane part, but it was still nice to see. Don't open dead inside was changed to open dead outside. Rick actually goes through the door this time, which was a nice callback to the season one, episode one. And I like that. And I like the comic cover variant here coming to the show. And I really did like the part with Sasha and Rick talking, but I kind of wish it should have been Carl. If it was going to be three people that would be meaningful to Rick, it should have been Carl. Herschel and Shane, well, I guess Lori as well, but since Rick is with Michonne, it wouldn't really make sense. But the Sasha segment was pretty cool, saying that it's not about us, it's about all of us coming together and the bigger picture, which I like where they were going with. And it made me feel like everybody working together is what we should be doing. And it was a nice mindset for Rick being gone that we should continue on the journey of The Walking Dead, even if and when Rick's gone. Walkers, walkers, and more walkers. The walkers at the campsite was pretty interesting. We didn't see Jed, we saw the girl on the horse, we saw a kingdomer, and we saw a savior. This whole thing was a hallucination, which kind of makes sense because how would Rick be able to get away from this group if they were there saving the day? Michonne kissing him and talking and being a hallucination was pretty interesting. It was a little too much dialogue, and plus, Rick was laying there on the bridge when the walkers were coming there. How long was he laying there? 
Then he got up and he was getting away and dripping all over the place. It was kind of like the walkers would be there and then they would back off. They would be there and they would back off a little bit. But Rick blowing up the bridge, to me, it was just a little far-fetched that everybody would think he would die because of the explosion. He didn't get bit. He wasn't right next to the dynamite. He was pretty far away. He was away from the bridge. So he definitely could have survived that. And he did. And I guess he left his gun there because Judith had it at the end. And then he magically washes up on shore right by Jadis, right downstream. And the water under that bridge, I have to say, was moving pretty quickly. It was like white water rapids in there. But I guess they've been setting up the helicopter connection with Rick leaving for a while. We saw it with Jadis, the helipad, where it was going, and that's what happened. Jadis, Rick are going somewhere to be seen in an original AMC film of The Walking Dead. Judith stole the show. Judith was pretty awesome. I like the idea that Judith is a main character now. She saved Magna, Yumiko, Luke, Kelly, Connie. And that's pretty different for the show because you could see the comic connection with where they were and the walkers. But in the comic, Jesus saves them. And here, Judith does. I think Judith will hopefully be a big character. I think we will. In the sneak peek, we see them for next week. And Judith is going to be a game changer. She didn't have a shotgun, which the spoilers were wrong on that. She had a katana and Rick's gun and Carl's hat. And also a shirt that looked pretty similar to Lori's shirt in season two. Is it the same? Is it a callback? Is it a connection? We have to see. But that's my early take on it. Sorry I was making this video as I'm watching Talking Dead and pausing and watching and recording. So it's my early take on it. Like I said, I thought the episode was good, not great. It's a nice way to send off the character of Rick Grimes. But as we saw on The Talking Dead, well I saw if you haven't seen The Talking Dead, you found out that Rick Grimes is going to be coming back in original AMC films not The Walking Dead TV show. So all this hoopla for Rick to stay alive in The Walking Dead universe. Well, there you go, guys. Let me know your thoughts. Post your comments below. Like, share, subscribe. I thought the episode was good. What did you think of it? And remember, guys, with hard work, dedication, belief, and sacrifice, you can truly achieve your goals. Believe in yourself. You can do it.